So today I'll be reacting to Idris Abdul Karim's interview or podcast with The Honest Bunch. It premiered a couple of days ago and it was fantastic. Let's get into it. I grew up in the North. You know, um, uh, I'm from a polygamy family, you know, and um, well, my mom had um, 10 boys and she lost eight of them. Wow. Well, yeah. And um, so she basically had to take me to the north and um, start all over again. So I grew up with my mom, you know, helping her to sell, you know, helping her to, before I go to school in the morning, I would help her to sell rice. In the evening, by the time I'm back, I would help her to attend to customer to sell pepper soup. She sells pepper soup. She sent me to school. You know, she's, she's my mom. She's my dad. I lost my dad when I was three, you know. So growing up, I represented Kano State as a table tennis player. Mm. Wow. Um, I, so after school, I come back home like around two o'clock, cook egg and go to the street and sell egg. They used to call me to cry on my lane, you know. So wherever you see table tennis board, where they play table tennis, mm -hmm. I go there because I know definitely that people will bet. Mm -hmm. And then go win and go chop. And, you know, you will share egg for, you know, people. So basically, um, before the champions come to play, I used the opportunity, drop my egg, try play small. Basically, I was training myself. I didn't know, mm. you know, so I became a pro. So when I bring my egg, some people will be like, no, I bet on trial on my lane to win you. And I just go and play. I, I became a very good table tennis player, you know. So one day, Coach Kasale Lassisi followed me from that table tennis court to my mom's shop and told my mom that she would like he would like to invite me to come and play professional tip tennis at Kano Club, you know. So my mom said, okay, it's no problem. She agreed. So every after school, go back home, you know, take my bag and go to Kano Club, train for two hours, became very good professionally. So after two years, um, I represented Kano State, even represented Nigeria. Wow. Yeah. You know, 1985 as that cadet players. Wow. Represented Nigeria in Nigeria. Cadet players are like, like 11 years old playing ping pong. Representing wow. the country. Playing ping pong with Akim Azan, Funke Oshinaike, um, Taufiki Maya, um, Bashir Abiono, wow. Atanda Musa, Musa Atanda, Musa, Woo! you know, Boke, Boke Kafu, great players, you know. Wow. So, went back to Kano. I became a star at very early age. So, Kano State Sports Council started paying me salary, you know. So, I got level five, step two. Wow. You know, for 11 years. <clears throat> oh, yes. Yeah. So I started taking care of my mom. She, yeah. she was everything that I had. And um, so uh, I'm a military person. I went to military school. And then all my school from primary to secondary, then finished in Kaduna NMS, you know. So um, one day, my agriculture teacher came to the class and said, Hey, superstar, I'm inviting you over to the soldiers club. You know, there is an event going on. Come over. So first of all, um, Idris Abdul Karim is a wonderful, wonderful storyteller. Uh, in my view, I like the way he is narrating what happened in his childhood. Uh, we can see that uh, he lost his dad uh, when he was quite young. And then he took a, a liking to table tennis, which he got quite good at. And I didn't also know that he represented Nigeria and Kano State are on the 12th level. And from a young age, you can see he had a huge sense of responsibility. 
by taking care of his mom at such a young tender age and then he now also talks about um, him going to military school um, which tells you a little bit about his character uh, let's continue to watch the video so i went to the soldiers club and for the first time i saw nigerians actually rap into a song oh. you know i was really mean is this for real how is this possible you know I was like, damn, I was like, what? I was carried away. I didn't know what was wrong with me at that moment. I was just carried away. So after the event, you know, I went to meet the guys, you know, introduced myself and asked them that whenever they're in Sawangiri, they can come over, you know, to my mom's place and come and eat something, you know. So a couple of times they come around, you know, and they um, I'll entertain them and um, I'll ask them, hey, how do you do this? So I get to find out that, okay, they were actually rapping other people's songs on a beat, not their original song, you know? So I was like, okay, this is cool. So what if I can write my own story? I write my own song. So I started learning, pick up a pen and paper and started from somewhere. I didn't even give a damn whether I have the voice or not. Mm -hmm. I just started writing you know after six months i saw a jukebox where you can fix a microphone play a cassette from here and, re and, and record, record on the other one the mic, yeah. you know so went to the studio got instrumentals from djs and i started listening to my was like what is this me like, no 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 it was a total discovery for me then Whenever I sleep, I'm a very spiritual person. I don't joke with my prayers and fasting, you know. Um, God wants to use my voice to speak about a lot of things, mm. you know. So then I knew that ping pong table tennis was just a stepping stone for me, that my real call was just to speak for the voice of the voiceless. So, yeah, I just wanted to react to that as well. And uh, Idris is just telling us, Pretty much is quite spiritual and not even at that young age you know god told him that table tennis wasn't going to be his future that music was going to be the way he was going to give the voiceless a voice and we see that in in his career in in, in terms of the kinds of music conscious music uh music for the people that idris did throughout his career and I believe this is the first time that he's mentioning this at such detail. And like I said earlier, he's a wonderful storyteller. The way he's weaving everything, we can see how it starts from him hawking for his mom, to playing table tennis, to representing Kano State, uh, to representing Nigeria, although at cadet level, and then falling in love with music. Let's continue. We used to have Dr. Fresh used to have LD Extra Large from Jaws. Yeah. We used to have Cosmo B, Mickey Freak, Special G, MC Garba. These are Northerners. Rap itself, it's from the north. It started from the north of Nigeria. Wow, I, do, I didn't know that. I always used to think that rap started from the south, Lagos, uh, particularly and southwest. But Idris is telling us that it starts from the north. Hmm, interesting. Funny enough, there are quite a lot of northern, northern based rappers middle 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 belt slash northern based rappers that are actually some of the best that we have in nigeria emma is an example and there are so many others but anybody likes it or not trust me you know that's why you see most most rappers that comes from the north always come to lagos and they always make it yeah because they are hungry they want to do something you know you need to be hungry to be successful you know, so it was 911 that was carrying tomato and pepe that brought me to Lagos. We spent five days on yeah, the road. Route to Lagos. Yeah. For road. Tomato will spoil now. You go yeah, all those only carry tomato. You go help them, you go help them, enjoy hand. If you can't be fucked up rich, you can't see the world where we say the roads they very <laughs> and it is gonna be you know, so when they come back. Come back <laughs> it was crazy. So after five days, got to Lagos. So dirty, you know. 
didn't have a place to stay, so I went to um, mile two on the bridge. You know, then I felt like no. Oh, is it instead of my two? Go one of these island bridge. You will see a lot of undercar. The what can I mean? Why those undercars now? Who's happy to be? Oh, oh, yeah, we drive yeah. underpass. You understand? So I went to CMS on that bridge. That was where I was staying for almost nine months. Yeah. So I that wake up. CMS. Oh, oh yes. Wow. So I wake up. I wake up around um around six in the morning. Pray do my salad, look at my environment, you know, whatever it is that will inspire me. I have pen and papers 24-7. I was writing, you know. So when old of dawn, jump out, you know, I'll just move and knock on any on the car. The person opens the door. Before he said, hey, what do you want? I'll just start rapping. Nah, how much? So in our minds, I'm a Jake and I went up on a Mokabara. Could not take a guy, call the makers, oh, I'm picking a guy with just boss laugh. We say, can you don't cut on it? Let's eat and cut on it. I'll be so happy. Because, okay, let us not change. Wow, go Idris. I didn't know you could rap in Hausa. I didn't even know you could speak Hausa before I watched this, uh, this podcast, but good to see him speaking Hausa and then rapping in Hausa. So yeah, really could have rapped in, in two languages if you wanted to. Allah, on as I work and come on, inshallah, say, so I'm on a Sarah. Say, wait, yo, so bedroom back on your book at inshallah. That's how I was survived. So this quiz, not this, please, so that people will know, understand. What's your rap finish? So you, they sing, you say, are you, they sing, you wake up and say, don't cut you from Kano, from Kano. How would you call me before you say, I call it was me, you're causing, eh? Or I make her find you something. So I was surviving like that. And also people, they are very straight. They don't discriminate. Yes. They don't discriminate. So, but but will you, will, can you share the, your age at this time? How old were you? That, at okay, this at this time I was about um, seventeen. 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 You never yes. become adult. So you had that OT that yes. You don't get that orientation. Say yes. Now mostly people will come from the north. They yes. drive mm. these these things, yes. and so you just take advantage of that one. Mm. That's right. To market your. So for me, uh, Idris shows a lot of intelligence. He shows a lot of street sense. He also shows bravery uh, to leave home before 17, to pursue his goal of being a musician. And then the rugged nature and this quest to wanting to become a successful person. And then, you know, just like he said, understanding where to go, who to, who to speak to, who to rap to, because he, he came to the conclusion or he came to the analysis that Hausa people used to drive under that particular uh, place. So there's no point in him rapping in Hausa to somebody who doesn't understand. There isn't that connection, you see, and there won't be any reason for them to give him money. But for them to, to open, to wind down, hear him rap, and then burst into laughter and say, wow, this guy's one of us, and then give him money. It shows his hustle spirit, even from that young age. Let's get back into it. Yeah, that's right. So one day, right under the bridge, there was this Rasta guy, he's a librarian, he woke up to me and said, man, you got talent, man. You have to go to Europe to make this talent happen. I said, why Europe? Why? That's a big money thing. He said, nah, man, we have to go by road. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Europe by road. Wow. Wow. <laughs> man. We have to go by road, man. I said, what? How? He said, yeah, man, we have to go by road. Let me show you the map. See, we have to go back to Kano. I said, that's where I'm from. He said, yeah. Then we have to go back to Kano. Kano, we have to go to Niger. Niger, we have to reach Agadez. Agadez, we have to move straight to Duruku. And Duruku, we have to head up. Duruku, where's Duruku? Does anybody know where Duruku is? Hmm. Duruku, never heard of it. Straight to Tamara said. I said, boy, how long is the journey? I said, boy, at approximately in a thirty days, we have to be in Duruku. <laughs> and when when we got to Duruku, Spain is just a stone drive through the sea, man. Hey. So this is. <laughs> 
what he said is very serious. There's so many Nigerians that this is their path to Europe. This is their path to the US. This is their path to Canada. This is their path to other parts of the world, including, including Australia, going through these long journeys by road, literally going through six, seven African countries in hazardous conditions and all sorts. And not many make it to Europe eventually. Not many make it to the US eventually. Many get caught back and start again from afresh. It's not easy. It's a very dangerous route. Wow. I said, what? Oh, I said, okay. That's so why we'll be saying I was still one just one chief for Lagos. I was go Europe now. Ah. Uh, the guy took me to Liberia Embassy to go arrange the Liberia passport for me. Mm. Then we left Lagos to Kano. I don't go see my mom. Mm. No, I don't go fit. <laughs> go see my from Kano straight to Niger, Niger to Agadez. Uh. Well, I do Aga yes, I now. Niger to Agadez. Agadez to Duruku was about 12 days. <laughs> she naked me. Now there I know, say, okay, there's spirituality about this world 12 days my people 12 days can you just can you just imagine that for one second 12 days wow is there's so much more about this world than the physical you know so midnight and you know when you want you know go and back on such journey uh, you must buy Gary, then hmm. buy sack where you go take good, you know, around your water. So the water no go feel you know, okay, dry okay, because okay. of the uh, sun. sun, you know. So then get a glass, you know, cover yourself because of the desert. And now I can't do what this thing. No, uh, 911. Yeah. Okay, 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 trucks. Uh, trucks. You know, plenty people from different parts of Africa go to just come around, you know, then. While we were on the move, we were about six. Then all of a sudden, just found out, say, all the trucks don't go on their own. Yeah. You know, so our truck can't go, you know, desert sand. Yeah, tire yes. can, you know, so the guy can't come down. Want to make everybody come down. So, Jeez. you know, did everything, you know, to get out of that place. So we're now moving out. He didn't understand the road any longer. I learned another thing, what happened? He came out and he brought out Quran. He sat down, packed sand, plenty of sand. You know, I was watching from where I sat. Arab guy, I was watching him. Then he opened the Quran, he was reading so fast. You know, say, this guy no Quran. Oh. He was reading, he was reading, reading, reading. He would flip again, he would read, 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 read. He was there for complete one hour. Then he stood up, he was like, he now took the sand, just took some from the sand. Oh. Just threw him up. But if he had catch me now, see, sand start to turn to. What is this? What's going on here? What? Then the sand just moved towards one direction. The guy now said, Asma, Bararawa, Bararawa, Bararawa. Wait a minute. Why? Yes. 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 It was moved to one direction. She making me. What does Asma, Bararawa, Bararawa, Bararawa. So, Bararawa, 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 asthma. Wow. Wow. Imagine seeing that in the middle of the desert, 12 days away from home, not sure whether you're going to get to where you're getting to, whether you're going to make it alive, and then seeing supernatural things in the middle of nowhere. People, let's go. I found the road. Let's go. I would rush and the truck again. <laughs> Moved this for midnight. Mm. No, so you don't go see anything. Like, yeah, everywhere don't die. Everywhere that. Mm. But I was curious. I don't know. Waiting God tell me. Say, make I just look outside. Yeah. May I just carry my head. Yeah. May I just look. Oh boy, for midnight I carry my head. And they see skeleton. She naked me from mm. far. Eh? Mm. They run like say you eh? won't come. You won't come. Overtake the boys. I said no. I remove my eye. I say, check again if this is not real or that joke. As I look again, as they see I'm the 
So see, a part of me is saying he really saw this. A part of me is saying, was he hallucinating because of the dehydration that had happened to him? Like he said, you know, he hadn't got water to drink for days. He was probably hungry, famished, tired, and maybe he was hallucinating. Or maybe he actually did see what he was talking about. What do you guys think? Comment down below. So... We moved again. The next two days, what I don't go finish. We think what happened. Very dehydrated. What's it gonna happen? <laughs> so one Daniel boy like that just come down. Just peace for your hand. Oh. I ain't drink um um more. That's it. And at the next level be that a peace to not drink. Survival of the fittest. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. It was crazy. We moved again to God be the glory. After 13 days, we reached Duruku. As we reached Duruku, Konga don't catch me tired now. I'm messed up. So there was this guy with one small shop. He just get like 12 bread, water, lipton, milk, you know. I come, we get small radio. And they listen to Wasiwa in Demasha. Yeah. Ah, for inside design, you know, in the list to was you in the masha, you know. So I say no, if this one they listen to was you in the masha, that is in a nice job. That now I woke up to her and say, but I found out. You know, she'll show all right. When you more okay, more okay, more okay, more okay, when you're more. But for a little days, I'd like to be like 14 days. They've been passing it similar. Should they for me pray there at the ticket? Only ah. So he was saying, Mutuambi, uh, Lati, be 14 days. He being Pashigi Similara. So, in translation, I've been here for about 14 days and I'm desperately hungry. <laughs> Four years. So, you got to go to Only my thing, you got my philosophy. Yeah? I'm more. If you buy it, I've been lucky for the winner. I could do for the loser. So, I'm more. So he said that he had been there for four years. Yes. He said this was way the also. Oh, yes. He said, what do you want to take cross over to Spain? He said, 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 he Different camps, mm. you know, people where they wait to cross, cross, mm. and people where they come back, we won't go back to Nigeria. Mm. Different camps, you know, Tapoli set up, you collect money, you collect your Tapoli set up, you know, your thing, and just they sleep and we they up, you know. So, my greatest joy is that God always communicates with me. Mm. He says, walk around, you're going to see somebody you know. So I started walking around. Hmm. Then all of a sudden, new 911 just land from Libya. I said, just come down like this. They look at your faces one by one. Just come down. Now I see my coach. Yeah. Table tennis coach. Hmm. Coach Aki. Wow. <laughs> I said, hey? Coach Aki. <laughs> eh? Now he looked at me. Only talo mo. Only. Omo yin ni Idris. Omo yin ni Bebesu. Only talo kuye baruti. Ye, 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 ye. Go. Tell me about it. So who tell you? Let me follow this route. Hi. Say this is a danger place. Say come, 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 come. In carry to uh, Jericho. Oh. You know. Say me I come. So I come follow. Come go inside bush. 
Come remove knife. Come cut part of the jerry card. And come remove like the five hundred dollar. You know, come carry uh, lighter. Oh. Come yes, seal them back. You know, come carry them. Say hello. I'm calling them You know, go buy raccoon meat, buy flour, buy tomato. You know, come cook. Come deal with that. He said, "Bubu, like like say, eh? say I've been in Libya." I've been coaching there, but there has been problem, you know. So I had to leave. I'm going back to Nigeria. So this is not a route for you at all. I say, coach, if you feel me come with all this dollar with me, I will go to. Say my Lord, just go, Nigeria. You don't have to go. I know this thing. The next day he left, he gave me like three hundred dollar. So there was this month where I used to pray. So go there to pray. So after Maghrib, like seven o'clock, the stars now said, "Hey, you." After Salama, he said, "You, God say, if you go to Libya, you will make it. You'll be great." But God says, "If you go back to Nigeria, you will travel all over the world. Wow! You'll be great, very, very great. You will help people." If we go back to Nigeria, say, wow. I mean, I know they take those kinds of things. Oh. So I can't look and say, ah, what's the next thing to do? <sighs> Toto say, you? You're Hausa? I say, yes. He say, mashallah. Oh. I'll take you to Ekomok, Nigerian army. Yes. They are 30 minutes away from here. They are Hausas. You speak Hausa to them? The plane comes? Then you go to Nigeria. Oh. I said, okay, thank you. One week later, I just come and say, hey, the plane is around. Let's go. Yes. Captain Umar, yeah, yeah. Salam alaikum, Captain Nagi. So, yeah, they can't love ya. Hey, they can't love you. You can't So, me, it's not that I can't tell you. I'm not going to tell you. And they say, oh, yo. I was going to come to Nigeria. I was going to come to Nigeria. They say, me, it's not. It's about the Alpha Yamu. Once you have a book, I'm going to die. It's into MashaAllah. MashaAllah. So he gave me food and all that. The plane came and entered the plane and back to Nigeria. It was Wow, wow. Like I said earlier, this guy can tell stories. I'm enjoying it. I hope you guys are enjoying it as well. I and mean, the way he's weaving the story is majestic. The names, the name of the pilot, the names of the people he played table tennis with, the nickname he was given when he was hawking for his mom. There's that consistency of him remembering the finer details that makes a good story credible, in my view. And he's also mastered the art of, um, for those who understand storytelling properly, you have a conflict part and you have a resolution part. So he's given us the conflict. The conflict is... Actually, he had, a, he had two conflicts. The first conflict he had was when he met the Rasta man under the bridge. And that Rasta man told him when he heard his, him rap that he needed to go to Europe for the world to see his, 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 um, his star. Now, he could have stayed in Nigeria. So he had that conflict. Should I stay in Nigeria? Should I go into Europe? He decided to go to Europe. The second conflict was all the things he narrated 13 days, no food, no water, uh, and you know, being there, not knowing if he was going to make it. And they're starting to see signs of people who had not made it, starting to see skeletons walking, running, starting to see people's passports, presumably dead, who could not make it to Europe, who languished in the face of trying to get to where they wanted to get to which was Europe and beyond. And we could see the resolution with him going through what the man that he met at the mosque said to him. Remember what he said? If you go to Europe, you'll be great. If you go back to Nigeria, you will not only be great, but you'll go all over the world. And because he's a spiritual person, 
I remember in the beginning of the story, he talked about being a spiritual person. So you can see how he's able to tell stories and he's linking what is happening in different parts of the stories to what he talked about in the beginning. So there's that metamorphosis in his, in his storytelling skills. And you can see the conflict and resolution. And the resolution presumably was him resolving and deciding to go back to Nigeria based on the spiritual advice that he said he doesn't joke with. Let's get back to into it. Three hours, 30 minutes. Three. Something of 30, something how many days? Yes. Landed in Nigeria. I couldn't go home. I just... So for me, this is the best podcast I have seen uh, on a Nigerian network and definitely from the Honest Punch. And Idris Abdul Karim has to be, if not the best... Um, I have seen in terms of a musician telling their whole story. Um, it's about one hour, 49 minutes long. Obviously, I can't react to the whole thing. Uh, you can check it out. I'll put the link down below. I just decided to react to certain parts of the podcast that I found interesting. So it was fantastic for me to watch. I watched it all in one take. I didn't skip. It wasn't boring. It was very educational and it was very inspiring for me. If you're here for the first time or you're a returner and you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Subscribe and click on all notifications. Like this video, share this video to friends and family and comment down below.